video by at least one subscriber who asked me to show my monthly favorites or maybe my almost like seasonal favorites. I think they're pretty cool. So we're going to be talking about spring overall because I think it will give us a little bit more of a kind of depth and kind of a tried, tested, you know, tried and true kind of favorites. <laughs> perfume favorites. The best new addition that I'm obsessing about, Laura Blue. I got myself a refill bottle, but even that is has quite an interesting bottle design. It's not by any means boring and I kind of love it. It reminds me of Madonna fragrances, doesn't it? For some reason to me it looks a little bit like Madonna fragrances. Laura Blue by Guerlain. I got myself Eau de Parfum. And I'm on a fougere slash shipper kick. I don't know, in the, in the ever so rising Florida heat, that I should be used to it by now because I lived for eight years in North Carolina, but like Florida heat is just something else. We are not even at the peak yet. So in this kind of like sweaty, wet, mind numbing heat, there are not many things that allow me to kind of like pull myself together. I basically just, at this point, let go of all of my romans because I'm, I'm not ready for that. Almost no masks in my rotation whatsoever. But the bitter, grabby citruses, herbals, kind of like these woody, piney notes, these are the ones that allow me to kind of like, you know, like, get together because I tried Azonic fragrances they're pleasant enough to run errands but they don't really give me a mood they don't really de deliver any feeling for me but when it comes to actually having a strong presence of a perfume you know something that colors your day blur blue and for me it's not really that sad the kind of like floral herbal bitterness of it to me actually perks me up and the well-loved favorite i already used up a whole decant and now i am well into my bottle that i recently showed you in the hole got it second hand i think it was like 60 percent full i think i already used up about five mils of it so this is prada their line of colognes, the fusion is the Prada, this is Vetiver. To me, this is the best type of cologne they have in the whole line. The other, uh, other very passionate favorite of mine that I really want in my wish list because I already finished my 8 mil, eight mil miniature is Rose. But that to me is more of a rose eau de toilette. But when it comes to Prada cologne, mmm. So good, so good. There's this vetiver is so perfectly balanced with this slightly ambery, powdery, typical Prada base. <sighs> so good. So I keep using and keep using and keep using it right now. And an old favorite that I ran out of is Niche. Um, this is Atelier Bohème Extraordinary Tulip. Got it from St. Bird. I absolutely love that service. If you're curious, I have like a affiliate link for you. You get, if you follow it, you get a free decant and I get a free decant. They have such good selection of niche. I'm just holding my fingers that they will continue to expand and expand their niche collaborations because they, I mean, Amouage, um, Raja, Clive Christian, uh, Montal, I don't know if they have Monstera. Hmm, don't remember. Like, so many exquisite options for you to try. Eight mil for roughly $14, I wanna say. Um, love it. So, Atelier Bloem, I actually, when I finished the eight mil of Extra Extraordinary Tulip, oh, I started looking for the full bottle I could not find anything cheaper than $100, like nothing, nowhere. And actually, I think I overall found only two places, one random seller on eBay and maybe like some boutique, online boutique, 
that was it. So it's not that easy to find it. So I love this version of Tulip so much that I think I'll probably get another decant. But ideally I would want a bottle because when you buy a decant, you should use it up. In all honesty, don't collect decants because they vaporize, they more easily turn sour and kind of lose the integrity of the, of the blend because they are not properly isolated from the air and from the natural oils and all of the kind of like extra pollutants that can get into the bottle. So ideally I would want a, a proper bottle so I can store it and have it for longer. But if worse comes to worse, I'll just order another uh, decant from uh, Sandberg because I love it. What's so special about the extra Extraordinary Tulip is that it's unusually long lasting. It has this kind of combination of iris, but I would say like root of iris. It's kind of like the green stalks of flowers in a way mixed with the smell of tulip. I, it's a fairly recognizable tulip, but there's something irisy in it that is not powdery. Iris usually we associate with, with the kind of makeup bag smell with kind of this powdery scents. And usually iris is added to the perfume blends to dry them up and to kind of like round them a little bit but in this case i feel there's something like iris root something that's green and meaty like thick as i as i as, as i said like a thick green stalks of, of flowers it's it's both floral but also green a little bit wet and rooty and I love it for it. Week break for other favorites before I continue on the perfume side of things. I am obsessed with nails. Again, as a white collar worker, scientist most of my life, I basically don't really work with my hands a lot. So they're usually like, it's pretty easy to keep them in good shape in terms of the skin, you know, and, the, um, and all that good stuff. But as I type a lot and like, Kind of like I kind of look at my hands a lot, oddly enough, during during my work days. I developed this obsession with having kind of like newly diverse designs on my nails. I'm not really into big nails, you know, like or extravagant designs. But every once in a while, I get into some kind of glitter, this, that, duochrome, shimmer, things like that. So I always had a pretty large, substantial nail polish collection. And there are a few tried and true favorites I wanted to share with you because I believe more people should know about them. So in, in terms of personal trends, I've been kind of like the whole spring, it was very, like very dichotomous. I was swinging between bright, almost neon primary colors. And this is, oh, those of you who know about nail polish are probably right now like having their heart flutter the long discontinued cult favorite nail polish that used to cost two dollars and now it's impossible to find this is sally hansen extreme wear color uh, pacific blue 420 funny enough 420 oh one of the best neon perinkle blues on the market for easily a decade i have probably 70% left in the original bottle and it's a one coater, it's neon, it's bright, it's like it's what a nail polish should be. Since then there were so many indie and mainstream nail polish collections, even those that were claiming this, themselves to be neon and we're yet to find anything that will measure up to this. Very few ones did. And the other kind of like Pendulum when the swing, uh, swing, 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 swing the other way was Dance Legend. Uh, not in terms of the brand itself, but the kind of nail polish that I'm showing you here. Crellies, Crellies with suspended glitter. Oh my God, they they were the rage five years ago. It's when the Deborah Lipman, like when the whole craze about ultra expensive nail polishes was going on julep $14 Deborah Lipman what was that $26 for nail polish 
Butter London 16. They're all like nail polishes that cost like $50. And all of that ultra luxe nail polish trend died out, which I hope will happen with the perfumes as well, because I'm getting a little bit tired of $400 releases. I'm not going to lie. It's getting a bit ridiculous. But maybe this is for another video. Maybe I'll save my anger for a dedicated video on, on the hyperlux category of anything in our life. Anyway, so these kind of crellies with suspended multicolored glitter, when you get these milky beige or pink or blue or minky, milky mint green, and every once in a while there will be like a silver or gold or you know contrasting glitter picking up from it and you get this kind of like glaze on your nails that those were the days for some reason i'm coming back to it i i can't have enough it, it's both festive and yet very kind of very put together because this kind of like um <laughs> porcelain look that the crayons give to the nails. I guess like it's it's in many ways similar to acrylic nails or like the gel nails that we have now. All of them have this kind of squishy porcelain uh, appearance to them, the finish. You can get that with normal nail polish as well and that I appreciate way more. I actually like changing it up, I would say three, four times a week because for me it's the time of meditation. I catch up on my podcast, on my audiobooks, on the YouTube videos or in the movie and I do my nails and I get like this new, shiny, beautiful, interesting uh, nail look as I'm winding down for the day. So this is definitely a favorite. Another, this is a new discovered favorite and the old favorite that again, not many people know about. The best, absolute best top coat ever. Like, I, I regret that I strayed away from it, and as soon as I rebought it, I was like, oh my god, we're back. We're back to perfection. This is Sasha Beat. They have a standard one, which is pretty good, but this is even better. Uh, the Sasha Beat Instant Gel Effect Top Coat. Basically, apply it on top of your nail polish, any normal nail polish, and you will get the true gel nail effect. Yes, it's not going to last a month, but it will look like a gel effect. It dries easily four coats in an hour. Like this is this is like a professional grade like, topper. You can you can have an intricate design. You can do something with acrylic paints. You can do whatever you want. You can do like sandwiching, which means like layering glitter, then some kind of like milky gel, like semi-transparent coat, then again glitter, then again something, 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 iridescent flakes, whatever you want. Apply one coat, a Sashini Instant Gel Effect Top Coat, you're done. Like in hour, in an hour, that huge thick mess that you created will be ready to go. And the best nail polish remover, which is a very important thing, similar to a good shampoo and conditioner for our hair, to have a good nail polish remover that dissolves everything, doesn't damage the nail or the skin, the sort of the matrix of the nail, the skin around the nail, and doesn't over dry the nails, is a lifesaver. Those who can't wear nail polish because it dries up their nails, listen here. Sally Hansen, moisturizing, this is like turquoise or mint green color, moisturizing nail polish remover. The only one I will use, I use them all. I used more expensive, less expensive. Uh, a lot of people swore by Zoya nail polish remover. In my personal opinion, it's too harsh. My nails were like killed. They were peeling. They were super duper dry. It really, I like my fingers felt uncomfortable when I used the Zoya nail polish remover for a long time. That one is, is definitely strong. It will remove even glitter, but it's not the best for the health of your fingers and your fingertips. The Sally Hansen Moisturizing, best, absolute best, swear by it. Used to be so easy to find. Now I have to like scour, like scout online nail salons or like, you know, wholesale nail warehouses to find it. I basically cut myself a box. 
<laughs> I think there are like 30, 30 bottles in there. But like, but then you get it for like two dollars a piece, and that's the appropriate price for a nail polish remover. But this is my favorite. I don't want to be without it, and I already experimented enough to know that the health of my nails is strongly, strongly depends on a good nail polish remover and a good nail polish base. So I know what I like. I know what works for me. I'm not. I'm not changing it up at this point. Back to the perfumes, a definite trend is decants. Oh my god, I have decants everywhere. I bought these from the dollar store, this kind of like colorful uh, cardboard kits, just multi-purpose things. I have some decorative bowls that have decants, I have them in all my purses, everywhere. Because as much as I love and adore good packaging of a bottle, it's really hard for me to understand what my favorites are if I can't really measure that. And having decants of all sizes that are marked uh, and that I can show you later in my empties, that's what really allows me to see what I use, how I use, do I like it, do I not? Because doing a random spray out of a collection that is over 200 bottles, it, it's very hard to keep, keep track. Of, of what's being used and way and how. So this is my way. This is absolute trend of spring and hopefully summer and the future fall. I do pour uh, my perfumes that I want to wear or want to like preview in the future into decants. Some of them are 10 ml, some of them are smaller. This is like Sandbird again. I have probably over 50 Sandbird decants. If you're curious to look at my Sandbird decan collection, let me know because I think somebody already asked me what, what I would recommend to order from uh, Sandbird as like a, like a first order or like how to compose your queue. If you guys want to talk decants with me or specifically what, what kind of inventory I would recommend to try from Sandbird, please let me know in the comments below. So there are all kinds here, five mil, three mil and two mil. It really depends on like how, how much I want to use up. Um, so yeah, definite trend, as I told you, I have them everywhere and I collect the empties and on my other channel I usually do monthly or month and a half, kind of like, kind of like the summaries, what I use up, how many mil like I actually used in the last month. I don't know, for some reason all of that accounting and kind of like the inventorization of what is happening in my olfactory life uh, really gives me a lot of pressure and kind of allows me to put scientific method to use when it comes to uh, to to the my kind of perfume life and, and the journalism that I do. Another beauty must has that I have again tried and true. Um, these are two hair care products that are like I can't live without them. I tried, I couldn't, I can't, I bought them again. First one is Theory Shampoos. I usually buy them in outlets like TG Maxx or Marshalls because you can find them for 12 to 14 dollars. If worse comes to worse, I look on Amazon where it's more expensive and if worse comes to worse, I go into the official website. I think the, the largest size bottle of their shampoo costs around 20, I want to say 24 dollars. For the hair like mine that is very, very thin. Like, my hair is so thin, you almost can't see it, and it's not super dense. I struggle with it being both super dry and super oily um, at the roots, and also having absolutely no volume. So like, you know, like all of like the curly girl methods and like the problems that girls have with have like their frizzy or curly hair, I wish I had those problems. I wish. Because I spend like probably half an hour every morning just like, come on, come on, let's do it. Let's get some volume in. Sure. Come on, show yourself. It's ridiculous. So for me, I need a very, very soft shampoo because there's not much to clean here. I really don't have much of a body, but it needs to be not too heavy on the conditioning ingredients because if it's heavy, then my hair will just like just like stick together and it will look like I have like some serious problem, problems like alopecia. So 
very finicky thing to have very thin hair, very finicky. No volume, yet they still get dirty and simultaneously super dry. You try to do any kind of heat operation on them, you know, like curl them or straighten them, you immediately break, immediately break. So coloring them, taking care of them, so you still have them at the end of the day on your head, it's like close to mission impossible, <laughs> but I do my best. So these shampoos, I usually take, like I take a variety of them. I only choose those that are for all hair types because Theory does specialize a lot for um, frizzy and over-processed hair. If you have that kind of problem, also could be a good brand for you to try. I would definitely buy the smallest bottle from a discount store so you kind of like give it a good go and see if it's worth the price. For me, it's 100% worth the price. I'm so happy I finally, that the TG Maxx finally opened and I finally was able to get myself a bottle because I really noticed a difference in my hair. And the condition that I swore by, and but those of you who every once in a while ask me about the hair coloring that I do, I use tinted conditioners. And the one that I absolutely love, apparently women with all kinds of hair swear by it is Overtone. This is an, I can say, indie brand. They are only sold, to my knowledge, online in their dedicated website. I think it's like Overtone something dot co, something like that. Um, I have so many tops of their colored uh, pigmented conditioner, so like the the deep, uh, the deep coloring conditioners, the daily conditioners. I also have a sample of their colorless conditioner. There's something magical about their conditioning ingredients. Uh, my hair had never been shinier or feeling better, ever. Everyone, ever, ever since I found the overtone, I just can't. I tried lime cryo. I actually made a whole video about that, so if you're curious, you can watch the overtone versus lime prime versus other tinted conditioners. We're talking depth about things, but overtone, mm, I swear by it. I can't live without it. Another favorite is as shallow as it's gonna sound, is TJ Maxx opening up again and Marshalls. Oh my god, people went fucking crazy. You should have seen it. So they uh, implemented the social distancing uh, rules, at least. I think everywhere in the United States and relaxed return policies because most of their money they make by selling clothing like discounted clothing and in the in the pandemic uh, reality it's not really clear how should all of that work with the stores so basically the feeding rooms are closed but if you go to the discount store like Marshalls or TJ Maxx you just do your best guessing your size Pull up your card, buy your stuff, and, and they do, uh, I think, 30-day returns, no questions asked. So, um, when I went, I was just blown away. The line to get into TJ Maxx was like, it was like threefold. People were staying in the blazing heat for 40 minutes to get into the TJ Maxx. I think this is, this is one business that was so missed that people went bananas when they reopened. I haven't seen lines like that anywhere except Trader Joe's, which is like our like kind of more indie, like more egg conscious and good ingredients conscious chain of uh, grocery stores. But like that was something else. The lines to Marshalls and TG Maxx, and they, they sustained those lines for four days straight at least. It was crazy and I was no different. I really missed the thrill of the hunt for a good deal and they're like rotating because they kind of get these like resale batches from sometimes designer stores, you know, like like really good skincare, hair care. Like I, I saw the video another day, uh, a girl got a homage for $70 in TG Maxx. I, when I heard her say that, I, I almost fainted. It's like, it's like to go to Paris, you know, if, if you've been to Paris now, you can die. Like this is, if I bought a mouage for $70 in TJ Maxx, I would feel like my career of a bargain hunter would be complete. This is unbelievable, the kind of stuff you can find there. 
but you have to hunt for it. You won't find it every time you go, you won't find it on every trip, somebody else will find it, you won't. Sometimes they just like throw in, I don't know, three of something, you know, and like for some for serve. The thrill of the chase, I miss that so much. So people, like I was not the only one, I don't know if it's any consolation, people were leaving with their carts full because it was just kind of this consumerist craving that, that people were deprived for so long. And I haven't seen it anywhere. In, like I went to a few stores because I needed to, um, so like to pick up an online order, like at Walmart, I think Home Depot, something for the house. So like I went to like a few stores, I, I tried to mi mi minimize it either way, but still I haven't seen such buying crate frenzy anywhere compared to TG Maxx and Marshalls. So, this is definitely my favorite of spring. I'm sad to say I'm no different, I'm no better than anyone. When I finally got my ass into TG Maxx and Marshalls, I went fucking nuts. But I scored. Let me show you what I got. Like, just a few. I got like, a bunch of things, but I'll... If you're curious, I can do like a TG Maxx and Marshalls haul in a separate video, but just a few things. So you understand the crazy aspect of it. So this is an Italian leather backpack. I love backpacks because they allow my hands to be free, but I also want them to be at least somewhat stylish. I'm not really a big fan of these like school style backpacks. I, I wore enough of them. When I was in school, I want my kind of purses and accessories to make a fashion statement at this point, <laughs> at least somewhat. Really good, a little bit of matte. You know, like the leather sometimes can be shiny. This one is kind of like a matte-like leather finish. All kinds of very useful pockets. This beautiful milky camel beige color. Guess how much it is. So originally it was, I think, over $200. When it arrived to TG Maxx, I think it was $80. When they reopened the store, on their clearance section, I bought this for $25. When I was ringing it at the cashier, she was just like, are you serious? It's like, yeah. It's like, how? Oh, because you know, the people who work in those places, they actually take the purse pick sometimes, which I think is perfectly fair. Like they should be perks to any job. Like Sephora like does the, what they call gratitude or whatever, so they gift makeup for people who work for Sephora. So I think in TJ Maxx and Marshalls, when there are new arrivals and some of them like really, really amazing designer deals, people who work there can kind of like reserve some of that stuff for themselves. So the cashier could not believe she missed it. <laughs> and I said like, she said like, wow girl, you scored. You should touch it to really appreciate how beautiful this backpack is. It's like thick, super plush soft leather it's a very smart design too it has a bunch of different pockets a separate um part for for my laptop like all the good stuff everything that you need in a functional and stylish backpack 25 bucks real leather and there were like a bunch of other things one of the like small little cute favorites is <laughs> since i moved to florida with only a few possessions and I still haven't recovered all of my furniture and personal possessions which is like a very sore point at this point I am becoming concerned that I robbed by a moving company because things are not looking good anyway I just don't have appropriate clothing for hot tropical climate so I got myself I was like okay I'll just get myself some cute flip-flops but look at that they're not only cute they are also in the very Floridian fashion, a bit sparkly and yet elegant enough. So this is basically a suspended, I don't know if you can see, silver glitter. And everything else is transparent. And this is Kate Spade. You can see like her signature mark in small gold accent. They look so simple and yet so glittery, stylish. I love them. For me, this is the kind of bling I'm willing to wear. It's not too much, but it has a bit of that kind of kick. I think this was Kate Spade and that was, I want to say $15, which is fine. I mean, this is plastic, right? It's not like Italian leather we're talking about, but for how well it's made and how kind of like 
touch of sparkle and style it offers for a simple flip-flop, I really love it. There are more things I can show you, things that I found and scored, some of them I'm very proud of. Uh, of scoring those deals, but like if you're curious, we can talk about it in a separate video. And the the last two things I want to talk about is actually one brand, and I really want to share with you. I've been changing my skincare because I moved to a completely different climate. My skin has been acting out a little bit. It's either too dry or too you know like here it's too dry, here it's too sweaty, and like so much oil and sebum is being pumped out of my skin because it really doesn't know how to deal with the hot tropical climate but one particular brand that i discovered through a, a friend of mine who's also a blogger in the sort of russian blogosphere she had like highly recommended she issued her like top skincare lists from iherb i heard of iherb but to me it was mostly the kind of website where anti-vaxxers slash vegans slash people who don't believe in science <laughs> go to buy their like spend a lot of money on supplements that I thought don't work <laughs> but then I discovered that they actually iHerb has a lot of amazing things it has Korea, Korean skincare, it has organic skincare it, it has way more than you know that kind of like green marketing nothingness so, following her advice, I got myself two products from Mediheal. I would never, ever, ever would buy anything from, from a brand like that because, first of all, it was cheap. Second of all, the design of it really doesn't make me think of anything exquisite, super green, super smart, super anything. But she said that she, was, she swore by Mediheal skincare products for their quality and affordable price. So I got the two, uh, the best sellers, and also like these two products have thousands of five-star reviews on iHerb, which I thought was probably like, a, like another justification for me to try it. So the first product I got is MEF, Natural Moisturizing Factor, Intense Hydrating Toner. This alone changed the way my skin feels. So this is a toner, but it feels a little bit like a gel. So it's like a very, very liquid gel. What I do, I just pump a few things in the morning or in the evening after I wash my face. And actually in the morning, I don't even wash my face. I wash it with this. So I just, just get a few drops since it's more or less gel-like. It's not as watery. It's very easy to get measurable, you know, controlled amount in your hands. And I just wipe my face, I let it a bit dry, and then I pat it with a towel. It, and at that point, I almost don't need a moisturizer. This is unbelievable. So not only it restores the pH, it calms the skin, it kind of like balances, it truly balances it out. So the oily parts are not as oily, the super dry and like irritated parts are not as red, not as irritated, not as dry. And the overall skin feels breathing. It's like in a very healthy, moisturized way. And then I follow it up with their intensive hydrating cream. The older I get, the drier my skin becomes. So I don't know if it will work for a young, acne prone or very, very oily skin maybe you can try and see but for for my skin it's just like a lifesaver these two products and they cost I don't know I don't want to mislead you but I think $10 range full-size products incredible considering considering that all of that what is it drunk elephant Sunday Riley Tatcha and yada 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 all again like ultra la chantakai la mer all of those ultra expensive skincare that to my opinion does no more than just nicely moisturizing the skin finding something that does does it beautifully for 10 bucks it's just an incredible find i might be wrong no i'm not wrong this is a korean skincare brand Korean skincare is on the rise because they really know know how to do skincare. That's for sure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed 
uh, this video. Let me know if any of these uh, recommendations were relevant to you, if like any of that kind of stuff you already tried. If you have some supplementary recommendations of your own for me and those who watch this channel, please leave them below. Let's share our like tried and true favorites, things that are we're, we're talking about with our family members, with our friends, you know, something that you can swear by. I would love to hear your recommendations as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, share this video if you enjoyed it. Maybe some of your friends would also find it useful or entertaining. And I'll see you in the next video.